Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Akshit, I'm a grade 1 student and in this video I'll be talking about how you can use Notion to become a more productive and organized student and ultimately improve your score in any exams that you might be taking. Um, I'll be discussing what Notion really is about and why you should use it. Uh, and I'll also be uh, going through an exam planner framework that I created in Notion during my JE main preparation days. A template of the exam planner framework is available in the description below or you can download it there and use it in uh, Notion however you like. So let's talk about what Notion really is. Notion is an all-in-one workspace and productivity tool where you can do absolutely anything. You want to take class notes, you can use Notion. You want to plan your classes for the upcoming school year or college semester, you can use Notion. You want to start writing a diary or create a journal, you guessed it, you can use Notion. So Notion is being used by hundreds of thousands of people every day to become that tiny bit more productive. In this video, we'll be looking at the study planner framework that I created in Notion uh, during my JE preparation days that I'm still using uh, every single day. Even if you're studying for uh, a, an exam like NEET or uh, any state boards or the CBSE boards, um, hopefully uh, you can extrapolate some of the ideas that I share in this video and apply it uh, to your exam as well. So let's talk about why I think you should use Notion. Being organized and disciplined was a key factor in my J results, but it wasn't until the latter half of my preparation that I realized how truly important these things were. Whether it's creating a schedule, being disciplined and holding myself accountable for my studies, or thoroughly analyzing my mock tests. Notion helped me navigate all these areas of my exam preparation with relative ease and I hope it can do the same for you. This framework will surely help you become more organized and will hopefully also fetch you better results. So let's get into it. So here's my study plan framework. It's called mental health crisis because I like edgy DNA jokes. Uh, well, coming to the first element or block as I like to call it is today's toss which is a very simple toss table which i use every morning before i sit to study and use it to plan my day and uh, write down whatever i'm going to be studying on uh, that day so all i do is just write the name of the topic select the subject and set the status set the status to not started because that's obviously the only thing that can be there now this might this status might seem like kind of a redundant thing but here's where the magic starts when you switch from the table view to the board view there now you can just uh, drag and drop your topics as and when they get done like depending on the status and it's just really easy to just whoops it's just really easy to just drag and drop these items as and when you get done which is very convenient and a lot of fun to do so at, at the end of the day i just delete them uh, planning my day like this helps me stay focused and uh, helps me to not waste time thinking about what to study next also i've seen a lot of people planning the day uh, just before they go to sleep the previous night and why i think that won't work for me personally <laughs> is because I might actually have a change of heart in the morning when I wake up. So all that effort that I spent creating um, my, uh, and planning my day, uh, this all goes to waste. And frankly, I could have used it for a much better activity like liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. Well, obviously my likes and subs don't count, but yours do so. Anyway, uh, moving forward, the next block that we have is called Add to Notes, which is a pretty simple block. Uh, I just write down whatever new information that I find out 
through casual reading or just doing a question and add it to here again i write uh, write the chapter name so that i know when i'm going to add these to my actual notes i know uh, where to add them and uh, th this is a pretty cool thing uh, so as and when uh, i add these to my notes and i click done they just disappear uh, so they get deleted by themselves which is pretty cool you have to admit uh, uh, if you want to see all doubts uh, solved or unsolved, uh, I mean uh, done, uh, added to notes or not, you can just click here and go to the all view and here you'll see all the uh, things that you, uh, uh, that you had to add to notes, which is pretty cool. So the doubt diary just below the add to notes column works in a pretty similar way. Uh, every doubt that I come across, I just write it down here. Uh, I add the subject so that I know which teacher to approach. And there's a solved column, which again, whenever I click solved, it just goes away or oh, wait. I mean the all column. Apologies. Whenever I click an option, it just goes away. The only additional thing that I have in this uh, block is the us by column and that is basically a column that i created to hold myself accountable and just ask uh, so basically the date in here is seven days after i found the doubt out so i gave myself a deadline of seven days to ask that doubt to a teacher or a friend or anybody uh, as you can see it's been going pretty well it's 7th april today and i still have a bunch of doubts left well i hope uh, if you use this template you will do better than me uh, but next we come to a pretty favorite section of mine just because it's really really aesthetically pleasing for me is the cbse checklist that i have for my cbse board exams which is sorted firstly by subjects so we have physics, chemistry, computer science, maths, and English. And then it is further divided into subtopics, which contain the individual chapters. This gives it a very clean and classy look. With, uh, and when I come here to work, uh, it just really, it's really pleasing to the eye. So as and when I get done with uh, studying this chapter for my CBSE boards, I just come here and tick them so that I know that I don't have to deal with them again. <laughs> All right, as soon as we go down from this absolutely mesmerizing thing, uh, we come down to perhaps the most important part of this framework. It's the mock test analysis. Well, this uh, and these analytics contain individual scores by subject, the overall score, uh, the date on which I gave the tests. So as we can, as you can see, I gave three tests in November of 2022, in December, and then seven in January. So f for a total of 12 tests, and I averaged about 230 marks, which is pretty decent um, so yeah and uh, out here on the right is something that I added a little bit later that's why you can see my all not all the columns are filled um, or the, what these columns basically are uh, t typical mistakes that I used to make for example whether I forgot a formula in any question whether I made a calculation error um, whether I knew the concept or not, maybe I made a mistake in reading the question and so on and so forth. So I just created columns for specific errors that I knew I made. And then I counted the number of times I made that error in specific papers. So as you can see in this paper, I made 18 such errors, uh, the next two 15, 15. So this really helped me keep a track of what kind of errors I was making and then this helped me create a plan for how to beat these errors and how to not make them in the actual exam. So this this analysis was extremely helpful, uh, but as you can see, I could not do it for all the tests. Now, it the 
<coughs> analytics block isn't over yet so what we also have here is when you click open on any one of these tasks you have a button for test analysis which you click you'll get two new things so firstly you can list some weak topics that uh, topics that you found were weak in your uh, mock test this time so you can list them and you can also list things that you learned that were new to you in uh, like each chapter in this mock test well mostly it'll be used for chemistry i used it for chemistry mainly in organic where i just used to learn lots of new things uh, from my mock tests and then i could add it to my theory later so i think uh, analyzing your weak topics and what you got to learn is a very nice way to set yourself up for all the revision that you'll be doing so that's it for the jmain analytics uh sorry test analytics doesn't have to be jmain for you test analytics block one of my favorite blocks uh perhaps only bettered by this really simple but absolutely elegant block of my j schedule now to demonstrate the power of my calendar i'll be using my uh final revision that i did for je mains right before the february session as an example only because i've deleted all the previous entries in my calendar but we won't talk about that so uh, i did about two to three revisions before giving the actual je main uh, revision of every chapter so before i started each lap of revision i used to sit and think uh, which chapters i'll do and for how long and then i used to feed it all in the calendar as you can see uh, i did differential calculus for about a week yeah, and i started with differential calculus emi and organic chemistry and so on and so forth and it was planned completely so it started on 9th of january and it was planned till well 20th and you can see j main was on 24th so i guess this was another f very very final revision that i did so you can see all the chapters in here but i used to refer to this calendar when setting up my tasks here in the first block so i would just look at the calendar and i'll see, i'll see like okay right now i'm going through for example differential calculus and so i'll add differential calculus uh, in the task table more spe i'll be more specific in the task table for example i'll say like differential calculus uh, theory revision or questions practice pyqs etc etc but that is how my calendar tied up with the task table if i ever completed a topic early i would just drag the duration back and the calendar would just uh, adjust itself the same goes for if i overextended any topic i would just for example i took two more days to complete differential calculus so differential calculus finished on 18th of january so i would just now drag integral calculus a bit to the right so that the balance still is there and so it was really easy to edit this calendar as well depending on uh, how i performed my on my revision and because the calendar was so flexible it really helped me be calm and cool and collected right before my exam because i knew i had enough time to do everything and even if i stumbled for a day or two i always knew that my schedule was totally flexible and i could change up two or three even three days uh, at a time if i wanted to so that was a really good thing about this calendar planning months in advance like this was definitely very pivotal to getting a good percentile in my je mains exam and i would highly recommend being planned and especially doing it on a calendar like this which is so so fun to do and as you can see also i forgot to mention one thing you can see that all of these topics are coded by the subject or just uh whether uh, they are tests or just some revision subjects so from the views you can go to a tests view and here you can see all the tests that i took and these tests are on the same date 
notes as noted down here um so the the schedule is also how i plan when to give my tests uh, so you can see i gave about two tests every week in january which is a lot and so that is the framework again if you like my framework and would like to try it out for yourself uh, the link is in the description you can download notion from the page and then put the template in there there are a lot of videos uh, and tutorials online that teach you how to do it well i hope this framework will prove of use to you and i hope you do well in whatever you're preparing for uh, if you did like this video um, do leave a thumbs up and if you would like to see more study related content do consider subscribing it would be much appreciated i'll see you all in the next video